What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melvin here for another review, and also Happy Halloween. And also, I'm feeling good today. Are you? Because it's my favorite holiday of the year. Who doesn't love Halloween? And you know who else loves Halloween more than everybody else? A certain Halloween di Hollywood director, Guillermo del Toro. And what I'm going to do a review is his latest series on Netflix, Guillermo de Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, why not join the storytelling? It might be worth it. And let's begin, shall we? So, The Cabinet of Curiosities. It first it was premiered on Netflix on October 25th of this year and it was written by and based on The Cabinet of Curiosities by you guessed it Guillermo del Toro or also known as Guillermo del Toro's Presents 10 After Midnight. Neat, huh? <laughs> and oh boy, this is a good series, I tell you what. To explain it, it's a series of a collection of Oscar-winning filmmakers personally curating stories described as equally sophisticated and horrific, which De Toro introduces each episode. Sounds familiar? It's like taking from the classic series like The Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt, and other anthology series like now like Creep Show, which. Instead of the creep, the creep just murders people, and then you just jump into the comic book. Boom. Next story. <laughs> but yeah. Gamer Totor is on the move, right? I tell you what. And most people are... Okay, now people are just hyped because, one, because after Disney's Pinocchio went, you know... Pinocchio smelling poop. <laughs> now everybody's getting hopes on his newest stop motion... Feature on Netflix, Guillermo de Toro's Pinocchio. <laughs> but we're not talking about puppets anymore. Oh no, we're talking about horror right now. But yeah, this has been on development since 2018. So, it's been a hush hush. So, the first episode that was there is on 25 called Lot 36, where Guillermo, directed by Guillermo Navarro, which was teleplayed by Regina Corrado and Guillermo de Toro. Based on a short story by, you guessed it, the Toro himself. Which, of course, tells the story of a veteran named Nick who, who purchased the right to an abandoned storage lot. He refuses an immigrant named Amila, pleased to let her recover family belongings from her lot, which, which was mistakenly sold to him, cruelly leaving her nothing but her old padlock. He acquires a lot, a lot of belongings to the decade old man, deceased old man, sorry, desperate for funds, he searches the lot for items to sell, and he finds a German seance table and three vol volumes of demon summoning. I hope he gets karma for this one. Roland enters his buyer. Roland urges him to find the vo fourth volume, which is worth about three hundred grand. Together, to search the room, finding the secret passage leading to a chamber. Which contains a dormant demon summoned and sealed in a desiccated body of an old man, long missing sister. Oh boy. Seems again interesting, aren't we? Which, of course, they spot the fourth book. Nick goes to retrieve it, but it breaks the seal, which. Fuck! The key of the demon in. It emerges as it. Uh, rivers, rivering tentacles, mass and consumes Roland, and chases Nick through a dark storage warehouse, finding a locked door and Amelia outside. He begs for her to open, but she locks him in with the padlock, leading him to be consumed by the demon. So yeah, like I said, karma is a bitch, and you don't want to be a racist fuck it? You're going straight to hell by this Cthulhu. I think he has tentacles, so okay. The next one was Graveyard Rats, which I think it really be a graveyard. And this is actually based on a short story by Henry Kuttner. Yeah. 
What it tells about Mason is a grave robber in desperate needs of funds. He attempts to be afforded by rats, which terrifies him and removes any valuable possession held recently buried corpse. When his financial situation becomes dire, he learns of a recently buried aristocrat and seeks to unearth him and his valuables, but finds the rats have already dig dug an enormous hole and dragged the corpse underground, crawling in them. But of course, encounters Anora's mother rat, who chases him through a network of tunnels. He falls into a hole and lands in a subterranean temple dedicated to a tentacled Eldritch god. He steals a talisman from the corpse, which Adam animates and chases him. Demanding its return, calling back to the tunnels, he manages to cause a cave in and get kills the mother rat and stops the corpse. Climbing towards the light above, he finds to his horror that he is merely the glint of a coffin lid plaque trapped inside and buried alive. He is sworn by rats later, the grave is on earth, his corpse, which emerges numerous rats. Wow, that's a lot of rats, I tell you what. And there's a lot more episodes like The Autopsy, which is a short story by Michael Shee, The Outsider by Emily Curl, and listen to this. A short story by H.P. Lovecraft, The Picket, The Pickman's Model. Actually, two. The Pikmin model and dreams in, in the witch house. How nice. We got another one. The viewing by... Well, it doesn't, it doesn't say who wrote who wrote the short story. It just says... Panos Cosmatos and Aaron Stewart M. Mm. The last one, which is absolutely remember, this was aired in 28, was, of course, Guillermo del Toro. He wants to end it himself. The Murmuring. Well, it tells a story about Nancy and Edgar Badley, who are ornithologists studying bird murmuration and recently lost her daughter, Ava. In the end, she contacts a really vagar, saying she is finally ready to talk to Ava. Hmm. Ain't that so well. But yeah. And those were the eight episodes of <clears throat> Guillermo de Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Which I find it interesting because when's the last time you see an anthology series like telling different stories of horror? I remember telling you that the reboot of Twilight Zone and it was two seasons. That was shitty. That was getting good. Then you have this show. Well, I think Guillermo del Toro is the perfect one to go re re revive the anthology horror series. Because he's like the the one who's finishing the ca cascade burning right there. Because the one who began was the, the, the series from Shudder, Creep Show, the series, based on the story in stories of Stephen King, George A. Romero. And much, much more. But yeah. Have you seen the series? Did you watch the episodes? What was your favorite one? To me, it has to be the rise because it sounds like someone to Tales from the Crypt where the where this cocky journalist trying to find out that a, a graveyard supposed to be buried for homeless people until he finds out it's actually ghouls eating them. <clears throat> and he ends up being the, the main course of the meal. Yeah. Yowza. But yeah, let me know what you think of this episode because of the series. I'll tell you what, Guillermo del Toro is on the roll here when it comes to horror. And now that that's concluded because there are only eight episodes of this. And now we're all waiting for December to show up to see his latest film, the stop motion one, Pinocchio. Which, where you saw the trailers, it looks pretty dub, actually. I'm just hoping, because, come on. This will be pretty cool, but yeah. Let me know what you think of Guillermo del Toro's 
Cabinet of Curiosities. And tell me, what was your favorite episode? Because, hey, you have a lot here. Why not? Until then, I hope you're all doing well. Peace and love, everybody. And also, have a happy, happy Halloween. Peace.